Hey guys, it's Britt. Today I'm here with a part two to the video that I did a few days ago. Things to consider before you make a commentary channel on YouTube. So if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so before we get into this video, I have a little thing that I wanna share. I just got this delivered about 10 minutes ago. This is the new Laneige lip treatment balm and it comes in this little component like this it's just a little pot and this little ball pops out and this is the silicone applicator which is cool and i'll insert a close-up but the product is it goes on clear but it has these little pink sparkles in it that are very very microfine they are beautiful and the best thing is it tastes like a pina colada Slurpee and it just takes me back to my childhood. That was always the Slurpee I would get when I was little and it literally tastes the exact same. It's that artificial coconutty flavor, but in a really good way, at least for me, because it reminds me of my childhood. So this, I, I was able to order this, I think on error. It actually doesn't launch till Tuesday at noon, but this video is going up Sunday, so on Tuesday at noon, if you're interested, you can buy it from Sephora, and I fully recommend it. It feels really good on the lips. You can't feel those little shimmers. You wouldn't even know that they're there, and I've always had really good luck with Laneige products, but I wanted to mention it in this video just for anyone that was curious. I mentioned it in my car chats that I had ordered it, and since it just came before I started filming, I figured I would tell you guys that I love it. So far, so good. So I want to preface this video by saying I am not a know-it-all or a whiz when it comes to YouTube. Nowhere close. But the things that I have seen and learned and picked up along the way, I'm going to share with you guys because some of my subscribers have channels of their own. And I know some of you guys are also interested in possibly starting a channel. Commentary, I believe, is growing on YouTube and it's going to continue to grow. I don't consider commentary the same as drama or tea channels. I think those are kind of in their own, you know, zip code over on the side. Commentary, I think, is more of a wide range of topics. So they not only cover influencers, but it's also just sharing your opinions on pop culture stuff or sharing unpopular opinions. I just think it casts a wider net than talking about Jaclyn Hill and Jeffree Star, if that makes sense, or any of the popular influencers that are commonly covered on drama channels. So commentary is a really cool avenue for a creator to go down, but it comes with some, you know, kickback and some negativity along the way. So I just wanna share what I've seen from my seat. Again, not saying I'm a know-it-all, but these are things that I've seen and I wanna share them with you guys. The first thing I wanna talk about is forced positivity on YouTube. PewDiePie did a video about this a while ago and it really speaks to a lot of YouTubers, but especially in the commentary sector because you're talking about other public figures and sometimes more sensitive topics and giving your opinion on them. And with this forced positivity, I think a lot of people come to YouTube because they want a really giddy personality and everything's, you know, jumping off the beds and super happy and all the positivity under the sun. And it's a YouTuber who has to flip a switch to turn on their personality to this YouTuber personality. That's not what you're gonna get with me. It's not what you're ever gonna get with me. And people that vibe with me do, and those that don't, don't, and it's all good either way. However, I think that a lot of commentary, a lot of people that have issues with commentary channels, it comes down to saying you're a hater, you're jealous, you're a negative Nancy, you're a sensitive Susan. All of these things, commentary channels are called because you're sharing an opinion. And I always fall back to integrity, where if you're sharing your opinions with integrity and respect, even if they are unpopular or very blunt at times, 
then you're doing all that you can. If some people perceive that as being negative or you know, um, jealous or hateful, then that's on them to sort out. You can only be responsible for what you're putting out on your channel. And for me, you are never going to come here and see someone who is off the walls with excitement. And that's something that I decided early on. I wanted my YouTube persona to be who I am in real life. If y'all bumped into me in Starbucks or Target, this is the conversation we would be having. You're just not gonna come here and get someone who's all over the place and super happy and crazy about everything. This is who I am, this is who I always have been, and I think those of you who have watched me for a while, obviously, you know, you chose to stuck around, stick, stick around for a reason, and I appreciate you, and, um, you know, those people who think that it's me sharing my opinion, jealous, hateful, mean, then I, I don't know what to tell you because I have always uh, come to my ch channel and deliver content with respect and integrity, even if my opinion is maybe not what the masses think of a certain person. So you're going to get those comments from people that you're jealous, you're hateful, you're rude. And all that you can do is fall back on integrity and know that you are who you are and you're, you know, doing your best with your content. You just have to kind of gauge if people are saying that you're jealous and hateful just to shut you down, that's one thing. But if someone's coming to you and wanting to have a conversation, then that might be something that you want to engage with. You have to decide what's best for you and your channel. Next thing that you'll hear a lot is you're only talking about this to get views. I cannot tell you how tired I am of hearing you're only doing it for the views because yes, YouTubers make videos so that they get views. No matter what topic you're talking about, you are making videos so they get viewed. I don't know of a single YouTuber that's putting a video out there so that it sits at one view and it's them that watched it. I don't know of any YouTuber that does that. If you guys do, let me know. But all of the time, research, dedication, energy, and effort that you put into your videos, you publish it so that it gets views. Because you're investing your time and your hard work so that an audience will discover it and engage in it or engage with it. But I see this argument a lot in commentary videos that, oh, you're only talking about the Ace family for views. You're only talking about uh, Micah Stoffer for views. Yes, I talk about people so that my audience will see it and I will widen my audience. And I know that my videos are being delivered with integrity and, um, you know, my my true opinion. So yes, I'm doing it for views. And if you make commentary videos, you're going to do it for views too. So those that think that you're doing it for views are only speaking the truth. The next thing that I hear is that you are not allowed to talk about certain people because they are viewed as unproblematic. So if you share your opinion about someone that's viewed as unproblematic, then you're just being mean. Here's the thing with the word unproblematic. Um, I understand where some people are coming from, but at some point in time, there is a large probability that everyone on YouTube is gonna be viewed as problematic. Whether it's short-term or long-term, there are many people who have slip-ups and, and you know make their audience angry, make the asses, make the masses angry because of a decision that they have made. So human beings are not perfect. And even if someone is viewed as being unproblematic, that's only for now. And that has nothing to do with people being able to share their opinions. And it's very funny because if you take someone who's unproblematic and they get into a scandal and you share your opinion about it, their, their stamp of being unproblematic for some reason 
warrants people to, it encourages people to go to the person who's sharing their opinion and say, this is only a one-time thing, you shouldn't be making this video because they're unproblematic. So talk about whoever you wanna talk about. Again, I always fall back on the integrity aspect of it. And if you're sharing your beliefs or your views with integrity, there is absolutely nothing wrong with talking about public figures. The next thing that you should consider, and this is actually the last thing for this video, is that growth in the commentary world is sometimes a revolving door. And what I mean by that is you could share all of your opinions up until, up until a certain time, and then you share an opinion that Sally Joe doesn't agree with, and Sally Joe leaves your channel because of that one opinion that you shared or that one video that you made. However, that same video could allow five new subscribers to come to your channel and agree with you. So I wouldn't, I'm not discouraged by talking about certain people or sharing certain opinions because I always want to be honest with you guys. And I'm not going to shy away from talking about this topic because I think that, uh, you know, Nancy Sue might get upset with me. So sometimes, especially when your channel, you know, back when my channel had like 900 subscribers, I would see that um, subscriber count go down by like two and it would really upset me. I would be like, oh my God, what did I do to upset these two people? But then in the same day, it would go back up by three or four. So it's not a big revolving door, but it can be a revolving door. And I would say to, um, again, not to sound like a broken record, but always fall back on integrity. And if you're being consistent and you're happy with your content and your the majority of your audience enjoys your content, keep going. Full steam ahead, stay consistent, and you know, stay stay on the right track. And just realize that sometimes you might drop a few subscribers because they saw a video that they didn't agree with. But that's commentary, and as long as you feel good standing behind your word, then that's really what matters. You know, don't lie or slander people, but stand behind your word and make sure that it's, um, you know, how you really feel. So anyway, those are my follow-up thoughts to my other video. Again, not the Wizard of Oz of YouTube or anything like that, nowhere close, but I realized that commentary can be very intriguing, um, channel type to create for some people, but I also feel like it can be discouraging for some people as well because you do get these kinds of feedback and comments and um, it, it can be discouraging for some people. So anyway, um, I will always listen to feedback from you guys and I think that's kind of one other thing is you have to realize how to segregate um, actual feedback versus people just being toxic and vile. That can be a really interesting thing as well, especially with growth, is you will have some people who want to give you feedback because they care, and then there will be a couple people who just want to annihilate you for breathing. So. Anyway, um, yeah, those are my thoughts for today. So if you liked the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.